Hello, my name is Martin James. I'm a HPB endoscopist from Nottingham University Hospitals. And together with Dr. AAT, we've constructed some basic videos for ERCP. So this video is all about achieving selective biliary cannulation, talking about how we approach the papilla, our composite movements, and how we can start by getting successful deep cannulation. We hope to demonstrate both on the Cook Endo training model and picture in picture with some real cases techniques to try and access the bile duct at the start of your ERCP career. This diagram illustrates the axis of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. You can see the yellow axis of the common bile duct is the direction which we need to aim the sphincter tome to achieve successful cannulation in line with the bile duct. The pancreatic duct runs more per perpendicular into and away from the screen that we're looking at on this two-dimensional image towards the one to three o'clock position and needs a much shorter and flatter approach for successful cannulation. To start with we're going to need access to the colon bile duct and we've now we've got the cook endo trainer where we're in position in the second part of the duodenum. We've got alignment with the uh, papilla and you can see the intra duodenal portion of the bile duct coming up from the papilla. The first thing I'm going to do is just um, advance the sphincter tone out to the end of the scope and try and get the angle of the tone to match the angle of the intra duodenal portion of the papilla and then by manipulating the tip of the scope closer and the elevator we can just try and engage the tip right in so that we can then strip the wire, so if Anne can strip the wire and you can see that the orientation of the catheter or the sphincter tome in this case um, is matching the CBD axis and you can see the wire sliding inside the um, papilla and hopefully accessing the common bile duct which if you go down now to the fluoro image down here you can see that the CBD is staying nice and close to the papilla as we withdraw the sphincter tome not too close we're slowly withdrawing and as we withdraw the sphincter tome we'll reveal the bare stripe guide wire and when the sphincter tome is back in the scope we'll just secure the guide wire by closing the elevator and then we can do a rapid exchange with a short wire system until there's resistance back at the working channel around five centimeters. So we've kept a nice stable position. The stable position is slightly, slightly long and slightly to the right. And then once we come back, we unlock the device, the wire's free, and we can do a small staccato movement just to move the uh, sphincter tome, secure the wire, and then we'll take the instrument off. And then we've done the first part of stone extraction, which is uh, securing guide wire access. So the keys to cannulation success of the common bile duct are understanding the potential um, changes in anatomy and the normal variations that you may encounter, getting good and correct alignment of the sphincter tone with the intradunial portion of the common bile duct. This is often aiming up towards the 11 o'clock position and often requires composite movements of the endoscope controls, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, we need to make sure the patient's had appropriate sedation and is comfortable and that we use small gentle movements when we're moving around the papilla to maximise um, our approach and success. There is a document recently published looking at strategies for difficult cannulation which are encountered in around 10 to 20 percent of cases. When we think about selective cannulation of the common bile duct versus the pancreatic duct we need to understand that the common bile duct runs tangential or almost um, parallel to the duodenal wall initially towards the 11 o'clock position whereas the pancreatic duct is more perpendicular aiming towards 3 o'clock. Both may run parallel for the first few centimetres. To selectively cannulate the pancreatic duct we often need a shorter scope position. The small left right wheel needs to be turned left and we need to ad adopt a shorter or flatter approach to the papilla. The cornerstone to successful cannulation and in training is understanding getting your alignment right and agreeing common language with your trainer. There are 10 composite movements which include a combination of lengthening or shortening the endoscope by pushing in the scope or withdrawing the scope from the patient, tip up or tip down using the large wheel, the right left wheel um, to the right or left which is a small wheel, rotate your body clockwise or anti-clockwise or right and left and using the elevator up or down and agreeing these terms makes successful training and cannulation much more straightforward. Uh, this diagram demonstrates the key areas that we'll be concentrating on at ERCP. You can see the superior duodenal fold. You can see the bulge of the intraduodenal or intramural portion of the common bile duct. 
This defines the axis of the common bile duct within the duodenum. You see the papillary orifice, which often has a common entry, or in this case, two separate entries for the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. And below the ampulla and papillary complex is an elongated frenulum, which can often guide us back to the papilla if we've, be, if we've entered too distally into the duodenum. You can see that the common bile duct axis is towards the 11 o'clock position, and it's important that the catheter is orientated along the axis of the common bile duct. Uh, this image is um, from Ivo Boskovsky and Guido Costamagna from the Rome training group. Show the movements that are necessary to try and access selective cannulation of the pancreatic duct. Again, in green and yellow, you can see the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. We need to turn the small left-right wheel left, shorten and adopt a flatter approach to access the pancreatic duct. This again shows the orientation of the common bile duct towards the 11 o'clock position, the position of the superior marginal fold, and in red, the position of the pancreatic duct. And on the right panel, you can see that there's been successful pancreatic duct cannulation and the start of a pancreatic sphincterotomy. Finding and accessing the papilla can be different in each case, and this diagram, again from Costamania's group, shows the many different appearances or faces of the papilla, often each requiring slightly subtle changes in those composite movements to achieve bleary cannulation.